step-by-step -step guide to Juniper EX series VC upgrade. Hello everybody. Today I'm going to take you through the step-by-step -step process to upgrade a Juniper VC in a live data center environment using USB sticks. It's a fairly simple process. Uh, you just have to follow the step-by-step -step guide that I'm going to share with you. Um, and we're going to do this guide for a live environment where we have switches in the data center which are in production. So let's get started. Since this is an upgrade for a live data center environment, so before the actual upgrade uh, process, we, we have to take a couple of things uh, into account. So one is that we have to take an outage window uh, because for the uh, duration of the outage, the VC switches are going to go offline and all the services on, on those switches are going to be impacted. So um, usually the outage duration is, is requested for uh, midnight because at that time uh, we can take the services down. Uh, so that is something to be pre-scheduled. And then secondly, we also need to take a few pre-checks before we start the actual upgrade process. So for the pre-checks, I've listed some of the important commands that you need to run on your switch. Uh, that includes the device alarms um, like chassis alarms, your system alarms. You need to look at the virtual chassis members. Um, you can note down the serial numbers that what member is the master, what is the standby, what are line cards, how many members do you have in a VC. Then you also take a note of your interfaces, whether you have any interfaces that are already down, uh, what interfaces are up. Uh, you can take a note of, of traffic as well. Uh, you can uh, take a note of the routing table on the switch. Uh, you should also also check the MAC table, which is presented as the Ethernet switching table uh, on a Juniper switch. Uh, and um, most importantly, you have to be careful of the spanning tree. So if you're running spanning tree in your data center environment, then you have to be sure how is it working. Um, you need to check what ports are root ports or what ports are backup ports what ports are designated or forwarding ports. So all these things you have to take into account before you start the actual upgrade process. The next step is to take the config backup. So we need config backup for two reasons. One is that when the switch comes back online with the upgraded firmware, we have to paste the config on the switch. Uh, because obviously the config will be wiped out uh, when we will upgrade the firmware. The second reason is that in case we run into any issues, uh, we may have to roll back. So we need configuration backup for that as well. Once we have uh, the config backup and all the pre-checks um, and we are ready to start the upgrade. So we start off by getting switch console uh, and then the first step that we do is we shut down the network uplinks this is because we need to isolate isolate our vc from the uh, rest of the network uh, now this is something very important because if you're running stb in your data center environment then this is something that you need to be wary of um, the best way to do it is that you bring the backup link down first so that you avoid any stb hiccups then you wait for about five to 10 minutes and uh, then you bring down the primary link uh, to see if everything is working fine in terms of STP. Once you have done that, uh, while you're still console on the switch, then you enter the command request system halt all members. So that would halt all the members uh, in the VC that we're going to upgrade. And yeah, do note that you don't press anything else on your keyboard while uh, you request system hold all members. Otherwise, you will trigger, trigger the VC to reboot. And that is something that we don't want. Okay, once you have halted all members, then you power them off one by one and install USB sticks at the back of each switch. After having done that, while you still consult on for the master member, you power it back up and get ready as soon as you see the loader prompt and hit the space bar repeatedly till you get the user prompt. Once you have the user prompt, then that means you are back on the switch. 
back on the master member of the switch obviously then you paste the following command and press enter now this command is actually uh, installing the upgraded firmware file on the switch for my example i have used uh, 15.1 on an ex4200 but whatever the switch uh, ex series switch you have and whatever the recommended way and upgraded way that you're going to install so you have to uh, edit this file accordingly uh, it's a fat 32 format usb so just be sure that you have the correct format uh, on the usb stick and the correct firmware version that you're going to upgrade it'll take a few minutes uh, but as long as uh, the file is picked up correctly and you don't see any errors so that confirms you're good to go uh, that means your USB stick is fine and your firmware wor version that you have upgraded to is, is working fine. So there's no issue with that. So after that, you move on to the next PC member and you power it on and repeat the same process where you go to the loader prompt as previously described for the master member. And then you go to the user prompt and enter the same command with the upgraded firmware that you have. Once all members are underway, console back onto the first switch which was the master member of the switch uh, we see and wait till it's back up back up means that it, you you get the prompt again it's back online after booting up with the upgraded firmware when it's back online just drop the config using load override terminal uh, once you have all the config pasted then in order to come out of that config mode you have to press Control d and then do commit check and if everything is all right, uh, you don't see any errors, then you just commit and quit. After that, wait for other switches to finish their upgrade and join the virtual chassis. Um, it would take around 10 to 15 minutes for each of the switch to boot up with the upgraded firmware and uh, join the VC. Uh, once all the VC members are up and have joined the rest of Fabric, uh, you will start seeing them on your master member. So they will start showing up as uh, VC members on the master member. So the master member being the master itself, then you would see the one as the backup and other one, other ones as line cards on your master member. So once you have all the all of them join the rest of the Fabric, then you carry out your post checks uh, before bringing network links back up. Once again, I would emphasize upon the fact that if you're running STP in your data center environment, then uh, you have to be careful of any STP hiccups uh, because uh, this would be the last thing that you would uh, want to run into on a night uh, during the outage window. <laughs> so uh, I would I would suggest that what you do is that when you have to bring your know, links back up, you bring the primary link up first then wait for about five to 10 minutes to see if STP is behaving properly as expected. Uh, and then you bring up the backup link online. And once both the links are up and uh, your STP is, is working all fine, uh, and then you can carry out your remaining post checks uh, and you can see that all your VC members that have joined the fabric, uh, they would be on the upgraded firmware that you have updated them to. So that brings us to the end of this guide. Um, should you have any, any questions or feedback, please do drop a comment below as we would love to hear from you. Uh, and kindly hit subscribe to stay tuned for our future videos as well. I hope this has been informative for you and I would like to thank you for viewing.